Hey guys, it's Rick from Toontrack, and I just want to thank you for joining us for this Easy Drummer 2 in-depth tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at all the new features and benefits of our Easy Drummer 2 program, and we're really excited to show you what this software can do. So by all means, let's start off and jump right in. Okay, so I've already downloaded and installed Easy Drummer 2 on my laptop, and I've opened it up in standalone mode so that I can work with it before I even start working in a DAW. Upon opening Easy Drummer 2, you'll see that the first thing you'll notice is a brand new sort of reinvented interface. Uh, the user interface still very familiar, uh, it's still very reminiscent of the original Easy Drummer, but you can see we have a slew of updated graphics and a number of other features that I want to point out uh, really quickly. If we start up here in the left hand corner and we work the way we read, you'll notice that we've got all of the different workflow enhancements delineated by tabs. Now in the original Easy Drummer, they were menus that opened within the same format in inside of Easy Drummer on the one page. Now each different aspect of the workflow has its own tab to help you better organize your thoughts and your workflow. You see we have a drums tab, a browser tab, the search tab, and then our mixer tab. As you keep going, you'll see the drop down menu. Now the drop down menu, just like Easy Drummer 1, is where you'll be able to select the library you want to start working with first. Easy Drummer 2 ships with two brand new libraries, both recorded at British Grove Studios in London by Chuck Ainley. One is the Easy Drummer Modern Library, and the other is our Easy Drummer Vintage Library. Now both these libraries contain unique instruments and drums, and have very, very, very different sounds. So again, a lot of basic, great tools to start out with when you open Easy Drummer 2 if this is the first time you've worked with the program. As you keep going, you see our menu drop down. We'll talk about that a little later. You also see some new uh, pads, one shot and percussion pads in addition to the drum kit. We have a hand clap or a one shot. Actually, you can go through and choose a number of different things, cowbell, snap, so on and so forth. We've got a shaker pad and we have a tambourine pad. And these are all to help you add percussive elements to your grooves as you're working in Easy Drummer 2. But clearly, the most uh, dominating part of the page is the new kit update. So let's take a look at the new kit. As you can see, our typical drop-down menu still is in play, our instrument properties menu. Only when you select an instrument properties menu drop-down now, you have a number of options that weren't available in the original Easy Drummer. The first thing you'll notice is that you can select the drum you want from this recorded library. So for instance, right now we have our DW Edge drum selected. You can scroll through other drums available in this library or new to Easy Drummer 2, you can actually scroll through any drum in any of your EZX libraries whatsoever. You can actually bring in samples from other EZXs and create your own custom kits as you see fit. Very, very cool. You also have control over the volume of the individual instrument, pre-mixer. You have control over the pitch, so you can change the timbre of the drum. And you actually have this really cool velocity pad that allows you to sample all the different velocity layers before you select an instrument. There's also a small button that says kit, and when you click on it, this will allow you to load one of any of the default kits recorded in a particular library. So for instance, right now you see we have the DW kit loaded. If we wanted to load the Gretsch kit from this particular recording, we would simply click on that, and you'll notice immediately the drums and cymbals that were recorded with that particular instrument are now available to you and ready to play. Another really cool feature about that kit preset load is you'll notice we have one called empty kit. If you load an empty kit, basically it gives you the ability to start from scratch and load whatever samples you want from your existing EZX libraries so that you can build custom kits and creations all your own. But for now, let's just stick with the default DW kit. We'll close that up. The last thing we want to point out on the actual instrument page is you'll notice at the bottom is our new song track, which is anchored actually to the bottom of every page in the workflow tab selection. The song track is a unique new feature in Easy Drummer 2 that allows you to work with your MIDI and your grooves right in the program without ever having to leave. You can actually construct entire songs without ever opening your DAW or any other program to work with your MIDI. A very, very cool feature that we're going to talk a little bit more about in depth as we go on. Okay, now that we've spent a few minutes with the instrument page, let's take a look at the browser and see how quickly and efficiently we can get into working with our MIDI and make some great sounding grooves. You'll notice when you click on the browser tab that the browser in Easy Drummer 2 looks almost identical to the browser in the original Easy Drummer, and this is no accident. We wanted our existing user base to feel very, very comfortable with the new program, even though there's a new and seriously large set of features and, and options available that weren't available in Easy Drummer. So 
you get into your browser tab the same way you would in the original Easy Drummer 1. You click on it and you'll notice that your MIDI packs are organized first by pack, then by the musical style, then the subgenre. It's, it's divided up and works exactly like the browser in Easy Drummer. Now, there's a couple of differences in Easy Drummer 2 that we think should make this process a little more effective. First, you'll notice that there's an actual play button next to the variation or the groove that you want to play. Simply click on that and the MIDI groove or loop will continue to loop and play so that you can audition it instead of playing as a one shot. You'll also notice there's a button that says preview in original tempo. Now normally your master tempo controls would be set in your DAW or even in this program down here in the master tempo selection of your song track. But if you wanted to actually audition a MIDI in the tempo it was recorded in, you would simply click this button and be able to hear the groove at the natural tempo it was originally recorded in. The other feature and function that's really cool in the browser is our new user MIDI section. If you look off to the right, you can clearly see that we have sort of a new menu area, drop down area, where you can actually create folders and store your own customized MIDI. You can create folders and subfolders and organize your MIDI as you record it or amend it or create new song structures. You can save all these things organized in a way that's easy for you to get to and remember. You'll also see up here at the top is a little wheel. When you click on this, you get a dialog that says add folder to browser. Now what that's for is when you're going to import maybe third party MIDI. Now by third party MIDI, I mean MIDI files that weren't actually produced or recorded by TuneTrack. You can simply do that by clicking on this tab and getting the MIDI actually incorporated into the browser through that process. Very simple, effective tools to help you find the right groove. Again, the browser tab was left very, very similar, if not identical, to the Easy Drummer browser tab on purpose, and hopefully this will not only give you that sense of familiarity, but help you to really, really start working with the program quickly and as effectively as possible. Okay, we just showed you how to use the browser, and if you've used Easy Drummer 1, clearly you know that it's not that different. Let's take a look at the new feature called Search Tab, which you'll find right next to the browser. We'll open that up and see how you can use the Search Tab as a songwriter to find the perfect groove for whatever piece of music you're working on. So the first thing you'll notice as you look through the search tab is a number of different dialogues. If we start again at the left and we're going to work to the right, you'll see we have a feature called tap to find, which we're going to talk about in a second. But you'll also see that we have a number of filters or tags. And below that, you'll see a list of MIDI files. So what's really cool about the first step in looking for the perfect groove is maybe in your head you know what you're looking for. You can use our tagging feature and system to kind of whittle out things you know immediately won't work for you. So for instance, let's say you knew what MIDI, MIDI pack it was in. You could click on ballads, you knew it was pop rock, you knew it was a hi-hat closed beat in 4-4 and you wanted straight time. You would have a list of everything that met that criteria loaded right below and you actually see not only the intensity of the, the actual MIDI groove, meaning how much music is going on, but you can filter your visible results as well. See what library it's from. You can come in and see exactly the resolution, right? There's a number of things you can customize to show you exactly what it is you want to see with your groove. Same thing with what you're looking for. You can actually pull library out, and again, anytime you want to undo your filters, you simply just click this X right here and your filters will reset. What else is cool? Uh, aside from the tagging feature, is what we're calling our anti-tagging feature or anti-filter. If you right-click on something, it will exclude whatever you've right-clicked on from your search result. So if you don't want any disco beats and you don't want any hi-hat closed disco beats especially, you simply right-click on those and as you search for your perfect groove, those will be excluded, anything that meets that criteria. So a really cool feature of Easy Drummer 2 is not only can you search the available MIDI that you own and have on your hard drive, but with our new show web shop MIDI function, you can actually search MIDI at tunetrack.com that you don't actually own or have yet. It's really simple. Once you've got your groove in tap to find, you click the show web shop MIDI button and what it will do is go to tunetrack.com and search through all of the existing MIDI packs for the groove you're looking for. That way, if you actually find the groove and you don't have or own it, you can buy that MIDI pack through TuneTrack.com or through your favorite retailer simply by going and asking for it by name. It really couldn't be any easier to find the MIDI that you have or even the MIDI that you don't have yet with Easy Drummer 2. So let's go ahead and clear that out reset our filters, and let's go back to this tap to find feature because tap to find really does represent one of the coolest innovations in, in Easy Drummer 2's sort of new enhanced workflow. 
Tap to Find does exactly what you think it does. It allows you, as the songwriter, to tap your rhythm out and see what it finds in your library that's similar to going on in your mind. Let's click on Tap to Find, and you'll notice immediately you get a dialog box that has a click track running. And you can simply click on the drums to tap in the rhythm you're looking for. So for instance, we can start with the kick drum. Then the snare drum. Now, one of the things you notice immediately is that my performance was horrible, but Easy Drummer sensed that and quantized everything to make it better for the search. Now we're just gonna start with a kick and snare pattern. You'll notice down here, you could change the quantization if you wanted to. We could go to 16th notes if we wanted it to be a little more specific, but eighth notes works fine for what we're doing here today. Now let's show the results. We just tapped in and we notice immediately that we have a number of results that come up. And you can see in a column here, matching, what percentage of a match the results are. You'll notice there's lots of 100% matches for this particular groove, which is phenomenal. That's exactly what we needed. As we scroll through, we can see a number of different things that are available to us. Really, the world is our oyster. We can click on a groove and audition it, see how close it is. If we like that groove, we could actually even make it one of our favorites by adding a star to it, and then later be able to identify it much quicker because now it's tagged. But we can go all the way down and see a number of different grooves that meet our criteria 100%. Now this one looks interesting. Let's play this. Simple enough. Let's work with that groove. Once you've got the groove highlighted, simply drag it down to the song creator, and you'll see that it populates very easily. You can actually zoom in. There's a number of features here, a number of basic DAW functions that you have. You can zoom in on the particular track, you can set loop points, you can play, stop. There's a number of things, change the time signature or the tempo. You can actually even record directly into the song track if you want to. Now, the reason you would do that would be basically if you knew where you wanted to add embellishments or add things that weren't in the track, that's certainly an option for you. Another really cool way to customize the track quickly is to copy elements from another track. In this particular groove, I believe if we play it, We've got a closed hi-hat feel, and let's say we wanted to go with an open hi-hat feel. Well, you could basically come up to a very similar groove and find an open hi-hat. There you go. Copy that. And then when you come down to your groove in your song track, simply paste only the hi-hats. So that now your groove would actually reflect the fact that you have open hi-hats. Very cool. And if you, you did that and you didn't like it, you could simply hit the undo button and things would go right back to normal. There are different levels of undo and redo on the song track, just like you'd find in a DAW. There's the zoom and cut tool as well. You have your master volume. We have a drop-down menu that we'll talk about a little later. Um, but one of the other really cool features of the song track is what we call the song creator. So we have our groove, and we have it in our song track, but let's say we're trying to work a little quicker and write an entire piece based around this groove. Simple enough. Simply click on the song creator button, and then drag the MIDI file from the song track into the menu bar here on the song creator, and voila! What you have is a number of grooves that have been found in your existing library, that are gonna work in a song format. And then it's broken them down into different song structure parts. So for instance, you've got some intros, verses, pre-choruses, choruses, fills, all of these grooves based around the original groove you fed into the song creator. As if that's not enough, there's another really cool feature in Easy Drummer 2 that will help you take your groove and work very quickly. And it's our new song structures or song templates feature. Basically, what you have in this drop-down menu is a list of very common song structures or formats, A, A, B, A, B, A, long and short, and ultimately, based on the groove you fed into the song creator, Easy Drummer 2 has gone and created complete song parts ready for you to go just by simply clicking and dragging down to the song track. Now you have an entire song in a specific format, again, A, B, A, A, B, very popular, very common songwriting formats, ready to go based on the groove that you originally came up with. As if that's not enough, none of those are written in stone. You can customize any song track function any way you'd like to. So any template that you pull up can have fills added, grooves changed, things moved around, and once you get it perfect, the great thing is you can go into the drop-down menu by the song creator and save your structure, save your track as its own template. So if there's a specific style of music or a specific song structure you work with on a regular basis and you perfect it, you can actually save it so that it's readily available anytime you want to use it in the future, making your workflow even just that much more easy to be able to come in, pull up your structure, and go. 
Now that's great. We found a groove that we like. We think it's a good groove and it, maybe it suits the music we're looking for. Let's say we wanted to go in and we kind of, we hear some things in, in the actual groove that we want to add ourselves that we don't find anywhere else. We have a really cool feature for that as well. If you come back to the song track, you can simply uh, enable the record button and record what it is you're looking for right into the actual groove. So if we wanted to add embellishments, tom fills, other patterns from a ride or any sort of instrument, we could do that there as well. But that's not all. Not only do we give you the tools to create songs very quickly or modify patterns and grooves very, very efficiently, we've gone one step further. And what we've done is create a new function that will allow you as the songwriter to never have to use the piano roll editor again as long as you make music for editing drums. And we call that function Edit Playstyle. With Easy Drummer 2's revolutionary edit play style function, you now have control and customization options for your MIDI that you've never dreamed possible before without the piano roll editor. To get into the edit play style feature, basically double click on any MIDI block or track in your song track. Once you've done that, you'll notice that a graphic representation of the actual MIDI file comes up. You can see the instruments that are actually present in your MIDI track. So for instance, let's take a listen here you can see that we've got all of the instruments that are in the MIDI track highlighted orange. Now, we can actually go in and select the entire groove or we can select individual instruments. So, the first thing that you can do in edit play style that's very, very cool and very, very, very effective from a songwriting standpoint is change the drummer's lead instrument with our revolutionary new power hand feature. Now, the drummer's lead instrument traditionally would be his right hand, whether he's playing the hi-hat, maybe the ride cymbal or a crash cymbal. In the past, if you wanted to work with different sound sources for the drummer's lead instrument, you would need to go into the piano roll editor of your DAW and select all the MIDI notes that you wanted to change and drag them to the corresponding instrument you wanted the drummer to be playing, then adjust the velocities and do a number of other things that would make the performance realistic. With the new power hand, simply click on play, and the groove will play, and drag the power hand to whatever sound source you want it to be. Be it the ride cymbal, be it the crash cymbal, or even bring it back to the hi-hat and select the drop-down menu and change the articulation being played. You'll notice in that drop-down menu you have all the articulations you would need for a realistic hi-hat performance. That's going to be the same on anything the power hand actually lands on. So if you were to take the power hand or the ride cymbal, the drop down menu would give you all the articulations for that particular sound source as well. So let's bring it back actually to the hi-hat and let's move on from the power hand. Let's see this other dialog, opening hit. Now opening hit is again one of those features that a lot of our Easy Drummer users have been really, really, really requesting uh, throughout the years. And it's quite simple. Opening hit is going to put a cymbal crash at the one of every looped groove. So when you have opening hit enabled, you have the crash at the beginning, as we'll play. When you disable it, the crash goes away. Simple enough. And that actually can be changed and added throughout different grooves, song structures and blocks, wherever you like. And the opening hit doesn't have to be a crash cymbal. It could be a floor tom, it could be a snare hit, it could be anything you want to signify the opening or the beginning of a new phrase rhythmically. But if that's not enough, you'll notice we have a number of grayed out drums in this particular MIDI groove because these instruments aren't present in the original groove. All of that changes with the edit play style feature. Simply select any particular instrument, you'll notice what select when it's highlighted orange, and then start to dial in this amount knob. Now, the amount knob is this amazing innovation only available in Easy Drummer 2. The amount knob ultimately adds musicality to a groove based on the instrument selected. So, for instance, we've just added this particular tom, which wasn't in the original groove, and we've turned up the amount knob just a little bit. Let's play it and hear what it sounds like. Now you'll notice that it's been added in musically, and the more we dial in this amount knob incrementally, the more rhythmically and musically it will interact with the actual MIDI groove. This is made possible by a very, very unique algorithm designed by the TuneTrack software development team that has scanned the over 80,000 MIDI files we've recorded in our company's history, and then anticipates as a result of that scan what a real drummer would do in this particular musical situation. 
That means every time you bring up a different groove, you're going to have a different set of musical probabilities that makes every time you use the amount knob a new and interesting experience. Again, unprecedented technology never available before Easy Drummer 2. Let's keep going. Again, you can add as many instruments as you want that weren't normally there. You could add all the instruments. And then once you've done that, you can actually select all of the instruments, you'll see they're all highlighted, and watch this great feature. So we've added a bunch of toms that weren't originally in the groove, and now we can actually change the subtlety of the entire groove if we wanted to. So for instance, let's say we wanted the entire groove to be a little quieter. So if we hit play, then we can come to the velocity knob and start to lower all the velocities in a uniform way, the way a drummer would actually lower his playing velocities. It's not mathematic, it's musical, and that's a brilliant thing. But that's not limited to just everything at once. You could actually go in to individual instruments and change the velocities. You can lower them or raise them, and they'll respond like a real drummer playing a real instrument. You can literally talk to your drummer in Easy Drummer 2 and tell him exactly what you want to play, and it can be performed right before your very eyes. With the Edit Playstyle feature in Easy Drummer 2, Every MIDI groove can be any MIDI groove you need it to be when you need it to be that way. Once you've constructed the perfect song in the song track, there's a host of features for you to work with that material actually in the drop down song track menu. The first option you'll see is how to export the song or the track. You can basically export it as a complete MIDI file, or in Easy Drummer 2, you can export it as a stereo wave file for working with grooves directly if you don't want to work with MIDI. You'll also see that you can go in and quantize the groove. You can apply a master quantize, or you can quantize different song sections depending on how you see fit. You can change the tempo. You can do a number of things. You can actually even find specific MIDI parts and grooves from your song in the browser with the simple find function. So again, once you've got your song the way you want it, a number of ways to work with it even after the fact in the drop down song menu. Okay. We found the perfect groove, and then we customized it. Now it's time to make it sound ready for our final production. The easiest way to do that is to use the new enhanced mixer function in Easy Drummer 2. As you open the mixer tab, you'll notice that it looks very familiar to some of the mixer functions in Easy Drummer 1. However, there are a number of new options and features designed to help you get the most out of our program and our libraries. The biggest enhancement to the mixer page is the inclusion of our Easy Drummer 2 presets. Simply go to the drop down menu and select any kit in your library, and you'll notice that there are a number of preset options that come up in the menu to the right. These presets are designed to maximize not only the effects and the mixing in the mixer, but the actual kit configuration and sound as well. Many of them are genre specific, but some of them just add certain effects or nuances to the performance that you wouldn't get otherwise with just the straight sound. The best part of the Easy Drummer 2 mixer presets is that all of our existing EZX sound libraries will be updated with free, wonderfully usable Easy Drummer 2 presets for you to use right out of the box. So when the program is loaded onto your computer and ready to go, all of your existing EZX libraries will be updated to add this new functionality. Now preset numbers and volumes will vary from product to product, but Easy Drummer 2's two libraries come with 29 Easy Drummer 2 presets ready for you to go. So for instance, we could scroll down to our Easy Drummer 2 vintage kit and select the heavily compressed preset. You'll notice that when we do that, not only does the mixer configuration change, but so does the actual graphic representation of the effects being used. Now, it should be pointed out that these aren't just some ready, set, forget it sort of mix presets that are strapped across the mixer bus so that it just affects the stereo outcome. This is something really, really, really unique. What happens is the TuneTrack design team goes in and creates a series of really, really, really complicated effects buses, sends, and routing behind the scenes and gives you simple access to those parameters with knobs and faders. So for instance, as you can see here, if we were to open the compression and start to change, you'll see that four tracks get highlighted. And what that's telling you is that the compression is affecting just those four tracks and it's affecting them behind the scenes in ways that you can't see. Again, if you were to come in and work with the mic bleed in this particular preset, you can see by turning a knob which channel is going to be affected by your mixing decision. 
very, very cool, very effective, and very simple to use. And again, Easy Drummer 2 is all about that finished sound. We're taking an already recorded drum set and making it even more audio friendly, making it even more pleasing to the ears by allowing you to go ahead and go in and customize the sound any way you like. In the drop down menu feature on the Easy Drummer 2 program, you'll find some very useful functions and features that help make your Easy Drummer 2 experience a little more productive. The first thing you'll see is an about Easy Drummer menu header, and that basically just gives you all of the version information of your program. The second thing you'll see is the operation manual. Now, in that manual, you can find a little more expanded information about the program and even learn a lot more about the functions and features we've talked about today in this tutorial. There's an online support header, which will just give you quick and easy access to our support team. You'll notice there's an allow program change function. Now, this is a new function on Easy Drummer 2 that basically will allow the user to control the actual kit selection via MIDI note number. Very, very cool feature. You see we have a MIDI in-channel feature that allows you to designate a specific channel for Easy Drummer 2 when you're working with multiple VIs in your DAW. You'll also see in the drop-down menu a new expanded eDrum support option. Now, once you click on this, you have a number of things you can look at, but most importantly, Easy Drummer 2 is now compatible in different ways than the original Easy Drummer with eKits. We've designed a couple of presets to work with very popular drum sets on the market these days, and we've even included a pedal correction function to help you dial in your hi-hat to the best it can be with Easy Drummer 2. You'll see an Easy X menu. Now that Easy X menu will give you a drop-down list of all the Easy Xs installed in your particular system. It's not a list of every Easy X we make, but the Easy Xs you own. And inside that information will be a brief description about the actual Easy X, as well as a MIDI note map on the keyboard so that you can see where all the MIDI notes are and correspond to on any particular keyboard. You also see knob mode, which allows you to change the actual orientation of the way the knobs work in the program. And then finally, you see the project function feature or menu. The project will allow you to save your entire Easy Drummer composition, every change, everything that's been handled in every menu screen as one particular project. You can save a project, load a project. You can basically make sure that you're always keeping track and most up-to-date versions of whatever it is you're working on musically in Easy Drummer 2 at the time. On behalf of myself and the entire team at TuneTrack, we'd like to thank you for taking time out to learn a little bit more about Easy Drummer 2. We think this program represents a super huge leap forward in the way people can work with computers to write and make music, and we're really looking forward to hearing your feedback and thoughts about the program once you've had it for yourself to experience and work with. Have a great day, and we look forward to talking to and seeing you soon.